Well, hello and a very good morning to all of you. I have the pleasure of welcoming my viewers on YouTube as well as uh, my students from class 11E. You see, I hardly need to introduce myself. You all know, you all know, uh, know me by this time, especially the YouTubers I am talking to. Uh, this is Akhlaq Ahmed, an English teacher from AMU. Now, in today's video, we are going to take up questions at the end of uh, Silk Road. Uh, you remember 11E students that uh, we completed the lesson but we couldn't do the questions. So in this, vi in this video, I'll give you the answers to all the questions so that when we meet next we can start a new lesson from snapshot. I'll talk about that in a separate voice note to your group uh, in your group later. Okay. Um, you see here question number one. This is in fact a set of questions and we are asked to give reasons for the following statements. Statement number one. The article has been titled The Silk Road. Well, this article has been entitled Silk Road because the author mentions or describes his travel through a route which, in fact, in ancient times was called Silk Road. Through this road, uh, silk was exported to the west so it came to be known as Silk Road and uh, the author intends to go to Mount Kailash for performing the in order to perform the Kora so that is why this uh, article has been titled Silk Road I have given you more details about this Silk Road which you can add um, if you wish so, so the next statement Tibetan masters were popular in China's imperial courts. We have to give reasons for this. Uh, in fact, Tibetan masters were brought to China's imperial courts as tribute to the kings. That is why they became very popular in China. Okay, now statement number three. The author's experience at Hoar was in stark contrast to the earlier accounts of the place. Yes, let's first see the author's experience and then we'll contrast it with uh, the um, experiences of others that he has mentioned. He himself says that Hoare was a grim, miserable place with no vegetation whatsoever and um, it was full of dust and rocks and uh, liberally scattered with years of accumulated uh, refuse and he says that this was really unfortunate because the town sat on uh, the shore of uh, the river Mansarova which is Tibet's most venerated stretch of water even the paint, uh, the the buildings were badly painted. So he was really disappointed. He had thought that perhaps it would be such a nice place with greenery and natural beauty, but that didn't happen. However, he refers to the experiences of two persons: a Japanese monk who had arrived in uh, um, Hor in the year 1900, was so moved by the sanctity of the lake that. Uh, he burst into tears and then a couple of years later um, you know the hallowed waters the holy waters had a similar effect on a um, tourist called Sven Hayden he was from uh, Sweden uh, a similar effect on that person although he was not so emotional as to you know start bursting into tears but they had the similar effect so while these two um, 
tourists, visitors were so moved by the sanctity of the lake that they were almost in tears. Um, the author found um, the town of Hor a very horrible place. So that's why we can say that his experience in Hor was in stark contrast to uh, the earlier accounts of the place. Now then, uh, the author was disappointed with Darshan. Uh, the author, in fact, was disappointed with Darshan because there were no pilgrims. You know, he had timed his uh, arrival in Darshan um, in the beginning of the season, the Kora season. Uh, but then, you know, it seemed a relaxed place, unhurried, but for him it came as a significant drawback because there were no pilgrims. So um, that is why uh, he was, uh, in a sense, disappointed by Darchan. Then we are also asked to describe the author's, uh, sorry, the author was disappointed with Darchan. Yes, we have done this. Then the author thought that his uh, uh, positive thinking strategy was worked after all worked well after all yes in fact just by chance uh, what happened was that he was sitting uh, in um, one of Darchan's cafe and he was thinking over his options which he considered very limited uh, you know uh, all of a sudden, what happened, that he happened to meet Norbu. And uh, Norbu, you know, uh, just requested him if he could sit um, in front of him. And of course, uh, uh, the author was glad to meet him. Norbu, you know, um, what happened was that uh, uh, they, you know, they meet, uh, he meets Norbu and, it's, and and he is able to strike up a conversation with him. And uh, in fact, Norbu was not from those regions because he was wearing a wind cheetah and a metal rimmed spectacles of Western style. He was a Tibetan. He told the author but worked in Beijing at China's Academy of um, Social Sciences <clears throat> in the Institute of uh, Ethnic Literature. So he was perhaps on some sort, sort of field work. He had been writing academic papers on Kalash Kora, but he himself had never performed it. So he had come to perform the Kora. And as soon as the author heard it, his heart jumped, but, uh, and you know, uh, Norbu suggested that they could be a team, and Norbu even suggested that they should hire uh, yaks. Initially, the author had thought or imagined performing Kora in the company of devout believers. Norbu was not a practicing Buddhist. He didn't have any intention of prostrating himself around the mountain, you know, he was very fat. But um, later, the author believed that Norbu could perhaps be the ideal companion because after all, his objective was to develop an attitude of positive thinking, um, you know, and an and, and attitude of uh, self-help. So, this... These are the details related to uh, statement number five. Now we come to another set of questions. Here we are asked to briefly comment on the following statements. Number one, the purpose of author's journey to Mount Kailash. The author was a Christian. He didn't have any uh, religious devotion to Mount Kailash. Still, he wanted to perform the Korak. 
because his intention was that when he will travel alone he will develop an attitude of self help the habit of self help and positive thinking he would learn to be positive and he would also learn to face problems and troubles alone that is why you know he says self help so that was uh, basically the purpose of the author's journey now the author's physical condition in darchan in darchan the author's physical condition was not good uh he was not able to sleep even for a moment the problem was that he had breathing problem and uh, he his, his chest felt heavy and uh, strangely heavy as he says and uh, you know he had amazing experiences as he sat down his chest relaxed and he was able to breathe properly but as soon as he lay down he you know once again the nostril was blocked and he felt uh, the pressure in his chest he tried propping himself up against uh, um um against a wall but that too did not work now he could not sleep a voice from inside said that if he slept he would not be able to get up again Uh, these were emotions you know in fact these were the effects of uh, height and uh, it was a cold and the effects of altitude as the doctor later told him but when the doctor gave him medicine he was able to get nice sleep there after which um, the satan left him so the author's meeting with norbu well we have discussed the author's meeting with norbu he was there in uh, the cafe with a gesture norbu asked him to if he could sit in front of him and of course the author was glad to welcome him he was uh, a tibetan working in beijing and uh, he was writing academic papers on kalash kora but he hadn't done it himself so he wanted to do it himself that's why he had come <clears throat> and he knew english that was a very important thing and so he could communicate with the author both became friends and decided that they would uh, go to mount kalash together though of course norbu had no intention of prostrating himself all around the mountain tasitan support to the author during the journey well tasitan supported the author very well behaved very nicely you know he brought him uh, to darchan through a shortcut and when he fell ill in darchan he looked after him and waited and did not leave him in um, the condition of illness in fact next day he took him to the darchan medical college and when the author took one day's medicine completed his one day medicine course and felt relaxed only then he left him so uh, tasitan was very supportive to the author now this statement is controversial the last one statement number 5 as a buddhist he told me he knew that it didn't really matter if i passed away but he thought it would be bad for business this means that tasitan really gave uh, i mean he was a professional he um um gave uh, too much importance to his business and he knew that if he didn't take care of the author and if he passed away then obviously it would be very bad for business so it was for business sake that the satan offered him support otherwise he was a buddhist and even if the author died that wouldn't have made no difference that that would have made no difference to the uh, to the satan because he was a buddhist and the author was a christian so thinking along religious line that is very much there but then uh you know that happens that happens but still they care i mean the these tibetans they care for business 
and they are very devoted to their business. They are very efficient and they perform their duties with efficiency no matter uh, who they are serving, whether it's a Buddhist or a non-Buddhist. Now here, last of all, um, they ask you to discuss in groups of four. I'd throw a few hints. If you wish, you can discuss it among yourselves. The sensitive behavior of the hill folk. The people of the hilly areas are considered to be really very sensitive. You might have noticed that when they pass solitary drogbas, you know, shepherds looking after their flocks, they used to wave at the author. And even um, Lamu, you know, when the author was about to leave the, um, uh, Ravu, um, she gave him a farewell present, uh, that is the sheep's, sheepskin coat, when the author had told him that he intended to uh, do the Kora and go to Mount Kailash, she had promised, she had advised him to uh, manage some warmer clothes and gave him a farewell present as well. So hilly people are really, you know, um, hill folk are very sensitive people usually. Okay, now the reasons why people willingly undergo the travails, that is the difficult efforts of a difficult journey. Now, this may have, I mean, you can write articles and articles. A lot of research has been done. This is one of the most useful way to have the first first hand experience of different places and in the earlier times when modern facilities were not available people used to travel from place to place and discover new places and to disseminate knowledge and to learn about different climates you know that that is how columbus happened to discover america but nowadays when we have <coughs> information on our fingertips even nowadays people do so and uh, this uh, mountaineering has become a very popular sport and uh, people take very difficult journeys uh, go on difficult journeys now one of the reasons that uh, the experts have pointed out is that modern life is so full of boredom you know we have a set routine we get up get ready for either school or our work go to work come from work and then as uh, say you know even if there is a change uh, we go to a restaurant or, or, or um, you know come back and again sleep so uh, there is no change no variety and human beings basically by nature uh, want variety so in order to break this boredom people do it for psychological reasons this is one reason uh, and of course there are people who love adventures that is why they take the travails that is the difficult efforts of a dangerous journey you can add to this you know you can browse internet and add to this if you wish I don't think such questions would be asked in the exams finally the accounts of exotic places in legends and reality well exotic means foreign accounts of foreign places uh, now um, you know um, in legends usually the accounts of foreign places are glorified presented in a very attractive manner usually or in a very horrible manner there is an exaggeration but obviously when a person actually happens to travel in foreign places and then gives a realistic account of that so obviously there is a difference in a realistic account uh, a foreign place may not appear as attractive as it may in a legend you know so that's uh, uh, the basic difference again I would say that you can follow these lines go along these lines and add to your uh, um, um, answer so these are uh, the answers to the questions 
and uh, I thank you for being with me throughout the video and um, at this note we would stop stay home stay safe and take care of yourself thank you very much stop recording video